All right, guys, welcome back. Today, part two of the WMD Beast torture test. This is gonna be the freshwater test, and we're gonna start it out just a little easy with the bean test. So I'm gonna rack one, uh, open up the gate, open up the beans, pour the beans on it, do a couple shots, make sure it uh, cycles and does what it needs to do, and then I'm, it's going in the water. WMD is the home of the Slingstock, as well as the most durable firearms coatings on the market. You can purchase whole rifles for them or browse their huge catalog of parts and accessories, many with their patented coating. If you want, you can send your rifles, parts, and accessories to WMD to be coated by the experts. Please go check out WMD today and see what they got. All right, it can handle beans. Now, into the water. All right, so far so good. The water actually kind of refreshing. <laughs> Nasty, but refreshing. You just got jammed. function reliably again. Alright guys, we're doing the drop test. Here we go. Think it's a 
magazine. Alright guys, it is now Monday, three days after I've done the mud test on the WMD and the drop test. Now, as you saw, the WMD handled the bean test like a champ, knocked out them beans. It did the water test like a champ, knocked out the water. The mud test uh, didn't do so good with the mud test. I had failures right away. Now, I have a couple... Um, theories of uh, what may have caused that, and uh, we're going to try to test those today. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to be trying to see what it takes to get it running reliably again. So my theory is, um, with this being a higher end rifle, the tolerances are obviously a little tighter than say on a budget build like my budget, you know, M4 copy clone build. Um, that in this rifle does not have a four-wheel assist, which would have helped me a lot uh, on some of that testing when I was doing the mud thing. And that mud that I was using for that test was really, really fine and sloppy. So my theory is uh, there were two problems. The first of all, with these magazines were having issues. Uh, they were jamming up with mud. And as you can see right now, this one here is really, really tight. Um, so that was one thing that was causing the rifle not to pick up rounds. The other thing it was having issues with is it wasn't ejecting rounds. And not that they were stuck, it's just the bolt wasn't going back either all the way or at all. And I have a couple theories for that. Uh, my main theory is that because that was such fine sloppy mud that I was using, and I was really chunking it in there, it made its way inside of the bolt. Now, one of, the, one of the problems that direct impingement like ARs have, uh, unlike AKs, is AKs have a lot of loose tolerances, and the way their gas system is made, you're really, it's going to be really hard to get stuff to really stop the gas system. But the way with a long stroke piston, the gas is going directly in and pushing straight back on the piston, which would... Essentially, you get a little bit of play between the bolt and the, uh, the the bolt carrier. And essentially, when it hits that spot, it actually hammers the bolt a little bit, which makes it break free a little easier. Now, with the direct impingement, you have gas that actually goes directly inside of the bolt. And inside of the bolt, part of the bolt acts like a piston, pushing the piston uh, backwards. You get two op uh, operations at the same time. You have the gas pushing the bolt carrier itself backwards. You also have gas going into the bolt, acting like a piston, helping force spread that apart. Theoretically, that's a good method for a reliable action because you have two things forcing the bolt to move and cam the bolt, uh, the carrier to move and cam the bolt to unlock at the same time. Now, the issue is that interior piston relies on gas seals and, and a lot of tight tolerances. So if you were to get some really fine grady stuff inside of that system, that's where you get problems. And that, that mud I was using was really fine, gritty, silty mud. So when I was slamming it in with the door open, I could have been literally pushing mud into these two gas port holes in the bolt and causing it to jam. So if you look right here on the bolt, those two holes are where the gas from the direct impingement exit out of the bolt. So I could have been literally slinging mud directly into the bolt, clogging that up with the way I was doing it. Ideally, I would have did the drop test first and then did the mud test with it closed and then went like that. But I wanted to go most extreme right off the bat. Because remember, the point of this, I'm not testing the rifle itself. The whole point of my testing is I'm testing the coating of the rifle. This rifle's coating is what I'm really testing. 
not so much the rifle itself. So it's the coating durability. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull out this bolt and I'm gonna take the bolt out of this one here, drop it in here, do two shots, and see if it runs reliably. Because there's only two places at this point that's gonna be causing this not to open up and that's gonna be the gas tube itself is clogged or that uh, the bolt itself is clogged. So I'm gonna do that. If it takes two shots, it will take two shots using this bolt and this magazine, then I'm gonna go ahead, look at the bolt, try to clean it a little bit and see if I can, what it takes to get it running again. I will be able to get it running again. But also what we're gonna do is when we open it up, I'm gonna take a look inside and see if there's any kind of corrosion or anything going on. Um, and then we'll see what there. Now I did go through and I did try to clean these mags, uh, to be honest. And I took them apart, rinsed them out and everything, and uh, to be honest, uh, they seem to be pretty uh, pretty gritty in there. I can see some corrosion. Now that water that I was in, um, and when I had mentioned in my first video, we have some of the most corrosive, salty conditions uh, in the entire country. Now, that water, where that spot where I filmed was 20 miles still from the lagoon and probably about 25 miles from the beach itself. So, brackish water, but not salt, salt water. But there's still salt there. And you can just see inside these magazines, there is some corrosion in there from the still components. So I'm gonna bring y'all in, we're gonna break this open and see what it looks like inside. All right, so first of all, rifle is clear. It does send home and goes in the battery just fine. So let's pop the pins. Take it in half. Let's take a look in here. Now you can see here, the buffer, it's got some uh, corrosion on it, but none too bad. Quite a bit of grit in there. Hammer does what it needs to do. Safety does what it needs to do. Everything is functioning as so. Now you can see on the actual itself, there is no kind of corrosion whatsoever on it. Now you can see even where I did the drop test, there's not even really any scratches on it either. And I dropped it on gravel. You can see the scratches on the safety and stuff like that. Take a look at the at the upper. This is the side that landed on the gravel. You can see the site. I bent the bent that in. Some scratches on the the on that. Nothing really. Got some dents right here. Uh, but nothing really. It took that that drop pretty well, and that drop is probably about ten foot, give or take. So let's take a look. We do seem to have some corrosion here on the bolt. Take it completely out and see what we got. Let's see. Charging handle, dirty, none really there. The bolt itself, we do got some rust on there. Not too crazy. I'm gonna get a moist rag. I'm gonna see what wipes off. Some of this might just be um, surface rust from uh, some of these other components. Okay, let's see what wipes off here. Oh, they're pretty good, actually. Now, this bolt is supposed to be nickel boron. And also, I have not lubed this rifle up at all. This rifle is running exactly as it was when it got sent to me. Whatever they lubed it up with is what I've been running it at, which is pretty dry, it looks like. So, but either way, this isn't the type of rust that should cause any kind of problems. The bolts. It's, it's a little crunchy in there. So if I have to clean that, we'll see about uh, opening it up, oiling it, and see what it takes to uh, clean that up. But uh, 
as you can see, when this is in the locked position, as so, the gas comes in right here, pushes the bolt forward, unlocking it, and the gas exits out these two ports right here. And I believe so right here as well. Now, when I had this open, I was throwing mud. I was pressured throwing mud right into these holes. So there is certainly dirt and shit inside of this bolt. So we're probably going to have to take this apart in order to get this to operate properly. Uh, let me pull out the other bolt so we can see how it functions as far as how loose that one is. Be a ba our baseline. Now this is my clean bolt. Also, you know, still pretty dry, but a lot smoother than that. So uh, there's certainly junk inside of here. So that is definitely my malfunction right there. As far as cycling is that right there. I promise you there's stuff in there. So we'll pull that apart in a little while and see. But as far as this bolt goes, pretty good. So let's take a look at the inside here. See, it's a... Uh dirty, but nothing that I would say uh, will be stopping it. So let's just gently wipe it. And that's all I'm going to do. Now, I will oil this back up when I do shoot it, after we do have to clean uh, clean up this bolt, and we'll see how bad it is, but um, it's gonna get oiled before the next test. The next test is gonna be even more extreme than what we just did. So let's uh, drop this bolt in, put it back together, and let's see if it handles a couple rounds. All right, this is no lube. Just with the uh, different bolt, different magazine. See, we got it all tore apart now. Um, a little bit of rust here on the bolt, uh, but not really all that dirty, to be honest. A little bit of rust on the bolt head here. Let me see if the. Okay. So the plunger's still working. Pretty dirty and gritty, so uh, you can see a firing pin is fine. Everything's nickel boron, but it's pretty dirty up in here. So let's uh, just kind of wipe everything clean. Gonna wipe it clean, oil it up, reassemble, and then uh, see how it goes. I mean, you can see it's wiping clean pretty easy. Even that rust in there didn't really seem to be. All that hard in there, it came right out, right off pretty much. Okay, we're all back together and uh, oiled up. You can see. Much smoother than it was before. I did uh, oil it up. I'm going to oil it up a lot more before I put it back in the action itself. I just wanted to point out, some of this rust wiped right off. Some of this might just be surface rust that's actually stuck to the outside of the boron and not so much the bolt itself rusting. Um, who knows, but I would suspect back here where the bolt is slamming against the buffer that we would expect to see um, a little bit more um, grit and wear back here as far as rust and stuff like that. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm also going to pull out the uh, buffer and see what it looks like back behind there. Alright, so, the buffer, and the uh, buffer spring. Now, I do want you to understand that springs are always go bound to rust. They are not made with any kind of materials that can be 
uh, you know, coated and stuff like that, like a nickel bond coating like this, it would chip and crack and break off of a spring. Um, so, you know, this is to be expected, uh, especially with how salty that water was. So let's wipe this off. See how much of this just wipes off. Okay, a good amount of this is just wiping off. But yeah, remember when I said rustiest or, or saltiest conditions down here? I'm not kidding. That was fresh water for around here. A regular AR, if it's nitrated or something like that, most certainly would be a. Uh, But certainly would have been locked up after uh, that session. Some dirt down in there. I can't really get in there, but I'm going to oil this up, put the gun back together, and let's see if just wiping that clean and oiling the bolts uh, was enough to get this rifle back up to firing uh, condition and ready for the next set of tests. Now, as you can see, there's, not, there's zero rust down in the uh, the fire control group. I am going to drop a little bit of oil down in there just to uh, keep it functioning. For the next set of tests, this rifle is really going to need all the help it can get. Oh, and just something else I just wanted to mention. I just looked down the bore, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. Yeah. Look at the bore. The bore's actually nice and clean. So that's uh, saying something about that, that the, the, the coating that they use on the barrels. It held up, and if you look over here on the nitrate and stuff like that, or, or on the barrel itself, there's no corrosion on the barrel itself at all. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm used to use my GoPro. There's no corrosion on the barrel itself at all. So that's good. That, you know, other steel parts, like if you just see on my sights and stuff like that, that is uh, rusting already pretty good. So let's uh, slap them together. Let's see if it shoots. We are back up to full operational capacity. Um, it is ready for the next set of tests. Which, when I say, are going to be even more extreme and more harderous on this rifle than has ever been seen, probably on YouTube, as far as corrosion resistance. You better believe I mean it. But so far, minimal maintenance, Judd's making it. I, uh, I'll be honest, I, in the malfunction that I, that, that it had was solely my fault uh, with the way that I did the mud testing. I should have did a little bit more incremental. I should have did the drop test first, which it obviously would have did just fine with afterwards. I should have did um, first mud test with it open. Also remember, uh, the gate was open when I poured the beans on it as well. So, I mean, it had beans in there. It had, then I slung the mud, which went actually all the way inside the bolt. Uh, so I was harder on it than, uh, most testing would have been right off the bat. But the next set of testing is going to be pretty pretty extreme. So y'all stay tuned for the next video and part three of the torture testing of the WMD MB Beast from WMD Guns. I'll show you guys next time.